Thank you so much, Kitty. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about green roofs today. Green roofs, for those of you who don't know, are anytime that you put plants on a, a built a building or anything that has a waterproof membrane. Um, we're going to go really fast because I want to show you three projects starting at the micro scale, um, and then we're going to scale up a bit. So first one is in Boston, Massachusetts, in the neighborhood of Bunker Hill. We were asked to design a green roof and uh, supply it where we could dial in precisely the amount of stormwater that would be managed on this rooftop. So this lawn that just looks like a normal lawn is actually a stormwater best uh, BMP or best management practice, which is managing 230 cubic feet of stormwater in every rain event. And it's simultaneously a place where folks have picnics and yoga, um, practice yoga because this is on um, sort of a green space for a condo building. A second project is in Oak Park, Illinois. Um, this project has a fifth floor green roof, but also second floor private green roofs. So just the <clears throat> second floor units have access to these. And so essentially what we found on this was that um, for an extra $20,000 on average per second floor unit, um, these individuals were able to get their own private lawn space. And the developer sold these condos on the second floor for almost $70,000 per unit more, all other variables held equal. So that means there's a 10% average increase in sales price for a lower floor unit than a higher floor unit. Normally, you would see a two, two to five percent decrease sales price per uh, lower floor unit. So this actually amounted to over 240 percent ROI return on investment for this developer. Third project, a green roof applied to Studio Gang Architects headquarters here in Chicago, Illinois. Existing building had to be very lightweight, green roof assembly. They wanted to create a native wildflower meadow, but they got too far along in the year and had to um, seed it with a cold hardy annual. We came back in the spring, we had a wheat field. They allowed us to leave that wheat field up, first of its kind to ever do so. We then <clears throat> harvested this with a group of students. <clears throat> the students then helped us thresh and winnow the wheat, separating the chaff from the grain. A miller helped us mill this into a high grade pastry flour, 3000 square feet of green roof, yielded over 60 pounds of flour. The students then baked with that flour cookies for a bake sale that they sold to raise money for their school. And the mayor at the time, Rahm Emanuel, came to celebrate the students. Today and a year after this, uh, the green roof system went back to the intended version of a native wildflower meadow. That said, we worked with a GIS specialist at Perkins and Will to uh, examine all the building records in the city of Chicago, found over 800,000 building records. So zooming out, you could say that almost a half billion square feet of viable potential green roofs exist in the city of Chicago. Applying these real world metrics means you could almost get 10 million pounds of wheat per year, nearly 2 billion gallons of available stormwater retention, which would only cost a mere eight billion dollars, but would it increase the real estate value of thir to 30 billion dollars more. And most importantly, you get 49 bottles of beer on the roof, 49 bottles of beer every year. Um, so thank you very, very much. I appreciate your uh, being here. Sure, Tyler, that's a great question. So, um, you know, many green roofs are historically considered um, only available for the highest, uh, for Class A office buildings, for example, or the highest um, real estate value. But um, really, we're creating ecosystems here at Omni that um, are quite cost effective. Um, they actually cost less than many of the traditional sedum systems, even though they're significantly more biodiverse. And so we have quite a few projects that are on affordable housing um, housing units, for example, some significant project, projects in um, Brooklyn, New York, as well as parts of Chicago and elsewhere around the country. So for us, it's about working closely with developers and policymakers to help um, provide you know, funding opportunities so that um, all properties can have access to this sort of um, this nature. No, they're not. Uh, the more biodiverse you make an ecosystem, the more resilient it is to um, to any sort of pests. So actually we find that the ecosystems we're building, which have more than 30 genera of plants on them, are quite resilient to any sort of um, climactic or, or bio, um, um, bio change. <laughs>